Hi, and welcome to the TBGS podcast, episode 13. I'm Sonia Wood, and today I'm going to share with you on the continued series of our Shelves of Ambition mission. (laughs) You know, the more we play from our Shelves of Ambition, the more we enjoy this mission. I've spoken about that before, but even though we are those kind of board game players who like variety and something new all the time, because to be honest, that is actually what we like, but we are being very disciplined about our mission, our Shelves of Ambition mission, and we're avoiding the temptation of the board game sales and Christmas in July and so on, because we keep reminding ourselves, no, 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 we must not go there. No more new games. It's not easy, because we love to buy new games, but we're trying to train ourselves in this mission to be disciplined and not get any more new games, because we know that if we did, then we won't be quite as successful in our mission for our Shelves of Ambition mission. When I say successful, for us that means that we want to get all of our games up to between 5 and 10 plays each. That's quite a mission, right? But here's the good news. Even though the tough part is resisting the temptation of getting those new games, when we do go and get the next game onto the table, one of the games from our Shelves of Ambition shelves, and we play it, we found that we're actually enjoying it more and more with each passing play. So this, of course, helps us to be very glad for this mission, because if we had succumbed to the temptation, we'd be playing a new game, which we can't deny, we do like playing new games too. They're always exciting and fun. But playing a game from our shelves of ambition gives us something that we would not have had if we were spending the time playing the new game. So, you may be wondering what are we finding to be so good about our mission. Well, actually, there's a lot of things. One, of course, is we are saving. And so when the time comes to reward ourselves, we will be able to possibly get those long-awaited-for and longed-for games. Also, when we play games multiple times, and that does not necessarily mean that we play the same game back to back, like over and over. We also mix it up a bit and we put other games in between. But when we have played a game up to five times, five plays, and then take it from five to ten, if we want to, sometimes we decide after five that's enough for that game. We're probably not going to be keen to continue playing it all the way to ten. So it's not like set rule, they've all got to go up to ten. But we don't want any of them to be less than five. And some of them (laughs) are way past ten because they're games that we just love. But what we are finding is once we have played that game more than five times, up to five times or more, we become so familiar with the rules of the game and the strategies. And we find that we spend more time enjoying the time at the table playing the game instead of spending time with our noses in the rule book. Well, actually, I speak for our situation here, because I'm not the one that spends time in the rule book, because James is the rules guy. He studies the rule book. So when we're playing a new game, James is the one that keeps referring to the rules. But once we've played that game multiple times, naturally, he needs to refer to the rule book less and less frequently. And so therefore, we find ourselves having more game time, which is good. James also does actually enjoy solo games, so when he is playing solo, then he can spend as much time as he needs to reference to the rules. But when there's more than one player at the table, well, then that changes things. To make the game time as good an experience as possible for all those people at the table, well, then naturally the less time consulting the rulebook, the better. That's our experience anyway. So that has definitely been another good which we have found with our Shelves of Ambition mission. More time playing the game and less time in the rule book. And another good is that we found we get to love the game more, meaning that because we have become more familiar with the game, we're starting to discover that other aspects of the game start to become noticed and they start 
like coming out to us, the more attention to them. We we found that we give more attention to them and notice them more, such as the components and the art, things that we were not noticing as much before. We become more observant of that, and we you know we notice the detail more, and that just actually for us gives us an even better experience of the game. And here's another one that I'd like to mention. It might not be applicable to all, but it is certainly a plus for me. And that is I feel very good about getting more value out of the games. When I'm saying value, I'm talking about monetary value here. I've spoken about all the other value, but specifically monetary value. Because it makes me so happy to know that what we have invested in the game is giving us a great return. Naturally, the more plays the more return. So that makes me happy. But anyway, before I say goodbye on this particular podcast, I must mention the last couple of games we've played from our shelves of ambition. And I must say as well that we have thoroughly enjoyed them. One was Seven Bridges. I don't know if you know it. It's a roll and write game. It was unknown to us, but we now know it because we've been playing it and we've really enjoyed that one. We also played two cooperative games recently, and they were Pandemic Iberia and Star Wars Pandemic. Again, just thoroughly enjoyed both of those. And we threw a good old-fashioned game onto the table, which we have played many more times than 10, and that was Dominoes. We had some refreshing fun with that one. We found it to be a nice filler game to have on hand. So thank you for listening, and until the next podcast episode, bye for now. I'm off to make some tea.